Hi everybody, this is Angelique, also known as The White. Welcome to my channel. Hope all is well. This is Valentine weekend. Not that that means anything, but hopefully, I hope if you're single, you're embracing your self-love. I know you don't like to hear that. If you have friends, go out with them this weekend. Um, you know, if you do have a lover, great. Appreciate your lover, but not just on Valentine's Day every single day okay i'm single um i'm not sure what i'm gonna do this weekend valentine's day um is my mother's birthday but she passed away 15 years ago so i normally do something but i know i'm going to um make like a altar for her and you know put uh, some water out and um put out some lipstick for her and some her favorite flowers and red roses um, some of you don't believe in, you know, um, honoring your ancestors, but I do. And, you know, it's just a little um, remembrance, basically altar for her. I'm definitely going to do that for her. Um, it's kind of hard to keep an altar in my home uh, because I have, you know, a relative in this house that has mental illness and likes to uh, destroy and ruin my things um so yeah i'm really uh going to have to put it out in my bedroom basically when normally you're not really supposed to keep altar in your room but i'm going to do it um you know for this weekend up until monday until her for her birthday anyway i said let me get on here it's quiet in my house oh my gosh i think my relative is not in the home right now let me hurry up and record this so that way you can have something to watch for this weekend and um i got my red wine yes it's like two o'clock in the afternoon i'm already drinking it's been a weird week i don't know if it's been a weird week for you guys it's just been a weird week even at the mercury retrograde even at the venus retrograde it's just been weird it's like it's been good like a, i've been having a lot of blessings come in but it's just been like i feel like people are trying to pull at my energy and men from my past trying to come back and it's like ah excuse me no or men like who i who i was interested in but they were playing games and they already had a wife or a girlfriend now they're trying to come back up and try to get with me it's like excuse you i'm good no thank you i'm not interested i'm definitely one of those people like it's very very easy for me to like you but then once i'm over you i'm over you pretty much but I just got shown a lot this week and um, it's just been a really interesting week and um, I'm thankful for it. But sometimes you're just not ready to see the truth about people. And that's what this video is going to be about. Sorry, I've been ranting for three minutes. Um, for, for those of you who are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you like videos based on narcissism, I don't do them anymore, but there are tons of them on this uh, channel that you can watch um, and start your healing journey um spiritual experiences chosen one videos uh there's a few zodiac videos on here as well stay a while if you're into spirituality you will enjoy this channel um uh click like click like click like click like on this video share it if you feel it's going to help someone so i do these chosen one videos now and you know a lot of people think chosen ones is just people who are in religion i'm not in religion i'm not christian i get a lot of christians on this channel and i still can't figure out why but anyway um to me chosen ones are those who can see the truth okay we are the ones that question things we are um the ones who have the spiritual gifts we are the ones who are awake we see what's going on okay we are the ones who are who can't be hypnotized okay by these particular leaders on this earth trying to control us okay so that's what i mean by chosen ones Alrighty. so this video is stay away from the robots get the robots out of your life chosen ones what do i mean by that i mean that you know there's a time whether you have always been awakened or you've gone through your awakening, you've gone through your spiritual journey, when you realize the people in your life, it could be your family, your friends, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, even your damn kids. It could be these people who 
they're under this hypnosis, okay? They're on they're under this hypnosis of what society has told them to be, okay? What their parents have raised them to be. What the lies that they told them so the lies that they were taught when they were children. So a lot of us chosen ones, we had to literally delete everything. I had to delete everything that was taught to me from religion to things about love, to things about marriage, to friendship. I was, I had this veil over my eyes. Yes, I believe I was, I'm considered to be the chosen one. So for some of you who have been on my channel, I guess the chosen one for you would be more like, uh, you're the black sheep of your family. Definitely I am the black sheep of my family. Um, I think at one point I was, I was the golden child because I was the one who was scared <laughs> and I would listen. So I grew up with a narcissistic stepfather and I think he made me his golden child in a sense um, because he didn't, he didn't know. See, a lot of these narcs, a lot of these demons that were raised by um, or have encountered in our life, they can't really, um, they don't have the same emotional intelligence I don't feel uh you know a lot of that is gone okay but us uh living breathing normal humans <laughs> um we can sense things right a lot of times we can sense things and a lot of times we can sense things because we actually grew up with these with these particular demons but for some reason he decided to make me the golden child and he actually made his own child the black sheep she would rebel against him and he would beat her and do all these crazy things to her even though he still molested me um i still was a golden child so i would always uh get told you know oh you're see you need to listen to angie she's the good child and see she's perfect she's this she's that and i would get toys and food and get to go places that she didn't get to go. And what it made her do was abuse me too. So technically, really, is a golden child really the golden child? Because at some point, they lose their freedom. They lose um, their own sense of, um, what is it, life, pretty much, you know, in choices. They're, they're, they're basically the dependent child. A lot of these golden children, do not go far in life because they are so used to everything being handed to them, right? And at one point, I feel I was a little bit like that where they do that so that you could become dependent and they can actually drain you of your light, the chosen one, right? So it's all a game. The chosen one, the black sheep, but the black sheep is the one that actually can save the bloodline, right? Which definitely I am in the black sheep when it when it, I was a, I was the golden child to the stepfather. So that means that he is a, not of my bloodline. He's nothing to me. But to my birth mother and to my birth father, I am the black sheep in both of their families. I am the one that even from a child, I have been calling out the bullshit from day one. To the point, my mother's narcissistic mother, who unfortunately is still alive, um, can't stand me because I called her out when I was 18 years old for mistreating me and mistreating my mother, okay? But of course she loves my brother because my brother, you know, kisses her ass, basically. He treated, he mistreated our mother. So in for him to kind of repent and replenish because he's he feels he's been sinful and he didn't get a chance to be good to his mother or make amends with his mother, our mother um he's trying to treat her mother well and think that's going to wash his sins of what he has done to our mom but anyway with that being said chosen ones these are robots sometimes your parents are the robots um your friends you know people who you grew up with you know that you feel you've you have so many good memories i think about it i have so many good memories with these robots right and at one point you were robotic even if god chose you to save your bloodline and what do i mean save your bloodline that means that you're going to be the one who's going to stop and make sure that your children won't get molested your children won't be abused uh, 
your family line will have financial abundance, right? Um, you will stop the drugs. You will stop the drinking. You will stop uh, the emotional eating. Anything. It could be anything in your bloodline. And it stops with you. That's why you're the chosen one. And that's a huge, huge position to be in. And it's very draining. And it's very uh, tiring, if that's a word. And uh, you'd be spending a lot, a lot of years healing the bloodline, right? And I think that's the reason why God blesses us financially. A lot of people's like, how does she do it? How is she surviving? She doesn't work a nine to five, but here I am. And I have to work all these hours to just pay, you know, just to pay my bills. You're not me. You're not doing the spiritual work. And a lot of times, if you really do the spiritual work, God will always bless you. Whoever you believe in the universe, it will always come back to you. Okay. No matter how it gets done, I notice that it gets done. You know, it may not be in the form that you want it, but God, the creator does not leave you just hanging out there dry. And if so, that means you aren't doing your part. And yes, there's been times where I had to suffer for years and all it's in order to see the abundance now. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> and I appreciate it now because of the long suffering that I went through. And some of you can relate to that too. But these people are robots. They're not your tribe. I love to say that. Your vibe attracts your tribe. The, they don't belong to you. Yes, you might have came through them. <laughs> you might have came through them. But you don't belong to them. All right? And I don't want to say, oh, you're so special and you're so different. But technically, you are. You're not like your parents sometimes. You know, that was just your portal Sometimes your mom or your dad was just your portal to get into this realm. Maybe you have some work on earth to do. And that was just the parents that God chosen. That was a portal that you chose. And some people feel you choose your parents before you enter this earth for whatever reason. And I always think, my, think to myself, why the hell did I pick my parents? I know why I picked my mom, but I still haven't figured out why the hell I picked my father. I have no idea. Um... I'll figure it out one day, but these people are not like you and the more healing you do, you're going to change. The more awakening, the more knowledge, the more books you read, the more YouTube videos you, you listen to, the more you Google, the more you advance spiritually, you become more of yourself so i don't think it's really you're you becoming this new being no you become who you the more of your true self is revealed i think i've always been this way i remember being like five and six years old looking out my bedroom window like something's out there like this is different this is weird i don't feel like my stepsister i don't feel like my stepfather half the damn time i didn't even feel like my mom you know, she was always depressed. I couldn't, I didn't have anyone to relate to, you know, and I always turned to God, whoever I felt in my mind God was, right? And I actually used to see angels and spirits and all these different things when I was a child. And that's what was comforting. And there was times my mom be like coming to my room going, who are you talking to, Angie? I'm like, huh? Nobody. I'm just playing dolls or I'm just... I'm pretending, mommy, when I really knew that I was talking to particular spirits that I was seeing. And they weren't there to harm me. I don't know if they were my ancestors or they were just angels, but there was always somebody with me. Like I never felt alone, basically. And some psychologists will say that, oh, children create these, um, create these characters in order to, um, what is the words? Create these characters in order to comfort themselves. OK, and that is true. And this is how people get multiple personality syndrome and stuff like that, because they can't handle the trauma. Their brain switches and then they start creating these characters of who protected them at the moment. No, this wasn't that. <laughs> this wasn't that. I was actually seeing certain beings. Sometimes it would be figures. Sometimes it would just be a light or whatever the case is. But I always knew that there was something greater out there and I was being protected and guided by something more powerful than myself. And a lot of you felt like that, Chosen Ones. And I'm going to be making a lot of videos about this 
you know, for a long time, I've only did narcissistic videos on this channel, but I had to get in tap into the spirituality aspect of myself because a lot of you need this information too. And a lot of you feel weird or odd. You're like, you don't have anyone to relate to, but yeah, I'm a weirdo with you. <laughs> I'm a chosen one with you. So those things, I said a mouthful. Those things, the spirituality, knowing that you're different, being the black sheep, going through certain spiritual experiences you weren't able to talk about, that does make you the chosen one. There's a lot of people who are in religion, they don't have these certain gifts. They don't have, they don't see, they can't see. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, They Live. So like he puts the glasses on and he sees the truth about the government, he sees the truth about media, magazines, fashion, money, people, spirit, you know, envy, sex, ego. He sees all of this and then he takes the glasses off. He doesn't see it anymore. It's basically like that. OK. And in the movie, he forces he tries to force these glasses on his friend in the movie. I think the movie was done in the 80s. So we'll look it up. They live. Right. And. He is whooping him and his friends, a black guy, the white guy and a black guy. And they, I mean, tell me, they whooping each other's ass. They is beating each other up. And he's trying to force these glasses on his friend. And his friend does not want the glasses. And that's how it is, chosen ones. These people don't want to see the truth. They do not. It's funny. There was an experiment during the pandemic. I shouldn't have said that word. But anyway, during the panty dropper, <laughs> then during the panorama, there was this experiment where there was a guy, I don't know if y'all seen that experiment. I think he had like a flashlight or it was something like a key ring or something. And people were lining up and he's like pretending like he's taking their temperature, but it's really like a flashlight or something like that. And all these people are actually letting this guy put like this flashlight on their head. It's not a thermometer, you know, and it just shows you how robotic and how stupid society really is and this is why we're in the situations we're in now with all these mandates and all these different things going on because the people just follow what they're told to do they're not thinking from themselves since you was a child chosen one you always thought for yourself i remember being in church and questioning like you know, they say Sunday school, We it was called Sabbath school because I grew up seven day Adventists. So I would be like, think like the, the story of like uh, Jonah and the whale, you know, being swallowed by the whale or like parting the Red Sea and <laughs> Noah's Ark. And I had so many questions like, hold up. If they were the only ones on the ark, did that mean that they slept together and they were all brother and sister? They said they slept with their kid. I had all these different questions, you know, that they're like, no, 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 don't ask that. Don't ask that, Angelique. Don't ask that. Just shut up. You know, I always had questions about religion and family and love and sex and all these different things that just kept being swept under the rug. And that's a lot of reason why you become the um, the black sheep, OK, or the chosen one of your family. And. I remember I was not even liked when I was a child because, man, when I came through in 1983, it was like, boom. OK, everyone called me the snitch in the family and that little girl can't come to my house and she can't keep her mouth shut and she knows too much. She's too mature. Why is this little girl always talking? And I came busting through. I was exposing the druggies, the molesters, everybody, the thieves, the gossipers. I was exposing everyone in the family. They couldn't even stand me as a child. And that seeped over into adulthood. Half of them are dead anyway, okay? So I don't really care what they think about me now, if they are thinking about me in the afterworld. But, excuse me, I know I'm better than them. <laughs> Spiritually, I'm better than them. Um, and these are robots. These are robots. These people in your family and your friends, you don't have anything in common with them. So I don't want to go too crazy in this video. Get the robots, get away from the robots in your life. And 
it is going to be difficult because even though these people have mistreated you, even though these people raised you, you know, you, you got blood running through your veins with these people. They're not your people. That's what us black folks said. Them ain't, them, them ain't my peoples. <laughs> okay. Those are not your people. All right. That's slang term. Uh, but y'all get it. All right. You don't belong to these people. And every time you're hanging out with these people, you got to put this mask on. Why should you put a mask on to be yourself? Why not just be alone until God sends your tribe or go hang out with only the people who are your tribe? Okay. And yeah, it's going to be lonely for a while until those people are replaced, but you have to stick to your tribe and it's, it's for your sanity. Okay. And we're human. So when you're around people who you ain't got no business being around because they're not like you. And it's so funny. A lot of other cultures, I don't know, here in America, they kind of like, you know, Americans hang out with like anybody in a sense. But when I think about it, it's so funny how I always talk about like I always had issues with Nigerian um, women. No offense to anybody who's Nigerian watching me. But I always had issues with them. Cause I actually had a Nigerian friend for like six, seven years who told me, my mother told me I can't be friends with you because I'm better than you. And I was blown away and I'm like, well, wait a minute, how are you better than me? You get it? And that's how you have to be. How these Nigerians have been with me. <laughs> how these Nigerians have been with me. I'm better than you. That's how you have to look at these robots. I'm better than you. I had no business being around you. We can't relate. We don't talk the same. We don't act the same. We don't have the same path. You're going to get, you know, said, these robots will get you killed. So say if this, and I know this seems extreme, but they've literally made movies about this stuff. Okay. And that's the thing about it. They put it in Hollywood to desensitize you from thinking that this actually can't happen when there's a whole bunch of panorama movies on YouTube and in Hulu and Netflix that and it's like down to the T of what happened to us is in these movies because everything's a plan is not it was not a pandemic it was a plandemic okay they know what they're going to do even before they do it and i know you're like what are you talking about you'll figure that part out that's that's going to be another video but these robots they can get you killed they can get you hurt they can get you put in prison okay and you're like, how would that happen? Because you don't agree with them. Your minds, you're, you're, you're not aligned with these individuals. And every time you're around them, you feel bad. I, there's no way in hell you be around these robots and you feel good. No. Mm -mm. You put on a mask, you water your conversation down, you water your attire down, you water your spirit down. You water who you are down just to be around them. And I know because I did it. I did it. And it's so funny. You be around these robots and they think that you're just like them. So when they see you start leveling up, they're going, huh? I never knew he or she was into that. I never knew they had that talent. I never knew they can do that because the whole entire time you've been watering yourself down just to get along with people. They fake in spirituality, but you really got that power. For a perfect example, I got I got two examples before I close this video out. Uh, this male friend of mine, when I met him, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a brujo. I'm spiritual. I do spell work, this, that, and that. You know, a lot of these robots don't remember sometimes what they're saying because it's almost like they're reading from a book. A lot of you have experiences with narcissists where they just, it's almost like they have a script. They have this script that they read from, right? And so when I had some uh, spiritual uh, things going on where I had to use, I had to like uh, do like protection work in my home, all right? Because I was being spiritually attacked in my home, you know, due to living with somebody who has some severe mental illness. Um, I always bless my home. I'm not going to go into details how I bless my home. That'll be another video when I'm ready to do that. Um, but I did like, you know, protection work in my home. So that way I won't be attacked by these particular spirits on this person that lives in the house with me. 
So I'm telling him about it and I always do it. I've been doing it for years. That's how I stay protected, you know? And um, he's like, oh, psh, psh. Oof, that's a lot. You could have to hire someone. Like, that's real scary. And I'm going, wait a minute. Didn't this guy say he was a witch? Didn't he tell me when I first met him that he was a brujo? He's this big time spiritualist. He does uh, spell work. And liar, liar. These people are liars. They go to their little script in their head. Okay, well, she's spiritual, so I'm going to pretend to be this. This is how they act. Oh, she's religious, so I'm going to pretend to be religious. They pretend to be whatever they think you are. This is why I don't tell people everything about me. You think when I go on a date, I tell like I'm spiritual? No. Mm -mm. Because I want to see if you really are spiritual, if you really are a chosen one, you can smell that person from across the room. I know when I see somebody of light. I know when I see my tribe. I know when I see a golly light on someone. If you can't see that, you're lying. You're lying or you're just not there yet spiritually. There's no way. It's kind of like, no offense, when, you know, a, a gay guy could be acting straight and he walks to the room and another gay guy go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, down low. It's like that. I can, it's, it, I can tell, I know I can smell the spirituality on you. And I knew he was BSing when he first told me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like you're a brujo? Get out, really? Hmm. Hmm. I knew he was lying from day one. I still thought he was a cool person. So I continued to entertain the relationship, you know, the friendship with him. But he exposed himself. How are you a brujo? telling me to hire someone but i thought she was big dog spiritually a real brujo a brujo a bruja would be like brujo bruja brujo bruja means switch you know a magical person the real brujo bruja would say well you know what here's a protection spell that i use <laughs> you know what i'm saying or maybe you need to do this oh, oh my gosh that's scary Oh man, what are you going to do? Because that's how he operates. He operates in fear and spirituality. Fake, false. Anyway, that's an example. People pretend to be something just to be in your presence. That's how scary it is. People pretend chosen ones just to be around you. I'm going to try to hurry up. I don't want this video to be too long. Perfect example. On my channel, I told y'all about a... A chick that has been in my life since I was a child and she's a psychologist right she's a psychologist but she's not mature at all um to a certain extent or <clears throat> I don't even know how to ex how to say it so I met this woman who was a psychologist I told this story on my channel already some of you will have to go back and find this story. But um, through the years, when I was younger, I had put this woman on such high, a high pedestal, not realizing if this woman was that high uh, on a pedestal, what the hell she needed me for, you know? And a lot of times, chosen ones, they will use you like you're some freaking project. You know, chosen ones, we seem people seem to think that we're lost they seem to think that we're lost because our lives normally don't go like uh high school college it happens very rare that this is the chosen one's life <laughs> high school college married 2.5 kids house white picket fence oh no no that is very rare i have never met a chosen one that had like a smooth sailing type of life no i haven't they might end up getting married, having kids, being successful, you know, according to the world standards of success. But their life story always has this craziness in it, you know, and they need to go through that, I feel, in order to be this powerful, because you have to be able to relate to many people's many people in order to almost like be God's messenger in a sense. Right. It's funny. That's what my name means. Angelique means god's messenger hilarious but anyway 
I'm just quiet because I'm, I have so much information in me that I want to get out. Don't think, don't think I'm like tipsy or drunk or anything like that. I just have so much spinning in my head that I want to tell you and I'm trying to tell you quickly. But anyway, I ghosted this psychologist this year. And I ghosted her because I had to think back and I had to admit to myself, I developed this relationship with this woman when I was wearing my mask <laughs> and I'm no longer wearing my mask anymore. You know, I met this woman because when I was about seven to eight years old, she used to babysit me and she was a teenager and she moved a lot you know, and she went on to be a psychologist, but she lived in Japan and Puerto Rico and all these different places. Um, she worked for the military. She was a therapist in the military. We kept in touch. Everywhere she went, she always sent me a letter, a postcard, and we developed this relationship through the years, you know. But a lot of times people think that chosen ones are so lost and they need guidance and they need saving and the whole entire time it is our light that they're adapt they're attracted to. And it seemed like this woman wanted to shape and mold me into her little, you know, little doll, you know, to kind of, I don't know, maybe to feed her ego. I'm not really sure, you know, and I've had other, um, I, I'm not going to call her a narcissist, but I've had narcissists try to do this with me too, where they want to use you for their ego boost so they can say, see, he or she went to college and they're a doctor because of me. I did that. I paid for them to go to school. I'm the one that motivated them. It's an ego boost. It's definitely an ego boost for them that they have control. And you're like their little minion. And while they get to shape and mold you, while they, while they give you money, they pay for things, that is their payment to control you. And when you start to think for yourself is when the problem occurs and I didn't, I couldn't get it. So this was a woman who has spent money on me during the years, of course, cause she's a freaking doctor. She, you know, makes over a hundred grand a year. But then when I had this quick change, I think I hit about my late twenties, maybe going, going to maybe, yeah, about maybe, my late 20s, I'll say, because I'm 38 now. Something happened around 28-ish where I just woke the hell up. And so I don't know if it was my ancestors or God, but it was like, I, 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 you did enough. You, you're playing in these streets. You're playing with these men. You're around these narcissists. It's time to get up. You're doing the most. Get up, okay? It's time to live your truth and your power we're not going to do this anymore with you, Angelique. So it was almost like spiritually, God yoked me up. As we say in New York City, God yoked me up, okay? Took me by my collar and said, okay, now it's time to get in alignment. And that's what I did. I left religion. This woman is religious. So she was just like, what do you mean you're not seven day Adventist? What do you mean you're not Christian anymore? I think that you have church hurt. I think that is because you grew up with that abusive guy that you think that you're not supposed to be Christian anymore. Sometimes it takes many, many years. No, when I tell you I am not something anymore, you are to respect it and leave it like that. If I had a friend tomorrow tell me I'm going to be atheist, I'm going to respect it. I'm not going to try to convince them otherwise. Well, maybe I would, but not in a disrespectful manner. When I told this woman I wasn't Christian anymore, she kept going and going and going and not respecting my wishes, not respecting my change. People who aren't your tribe, people who aren't the chosen ones do not respect your change. They do not respect your growth. They can change. This woman has changed so much over the years. I'm talking so much over the years, okay? She even got married a couple of years ago to a non-Christian, which is hilarious. She's a vegan, he eats meat. It is, it's, it's funny. We are to adapt. They want us to adapt to their change, but we are not supposed to change, okay? So when you're a chosen one and people are trying to hold you back, 
that's not your tribe. Those are the robots. <laughs> They're the robots. Excuse me. When I said I didn't want to get the, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it on, on uh, the camera. When I said I wasn't going to get that, right? Oh my gosh. What are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean you're not going to get that? Everyone's getting it. Okay. I'm not everyone. She didn't respect that. 2020, you know, during the panorama, I cut all my hair off and dyed it blue. Some of you guys don't know that because you're new to my channel. And it was something I've always wanted to do. Um, and I loved it and people loved it. Believe it or not, men always say, guys who like me or whatever, they always like, man, when you had that blue hair, that was fire. I loved it. It was so different and bold and it matched your aura. She said, huh, what made you do that? Chosen ones, why would you want to be around people who don't even like you? These people don't like you. These people don't like you because you march to your own drum, okay? Your own beat. You don't need nobody's approval, okay? But some of us, some of you, and I've done it before, you wear this mask to go out into the world. You're home in the comfort of your home or with people online who are just like you. But when you go to work, you wear your mask. When you go out in the streets, you wear your mask. The only thing that I do, I feel by wearing my mask is I don't always wear my magical or my spiritual attire and that's because I don't want people to pinpoint and be like that's what a spiritual chick is supposed to look like all spiritual chicks don't have to have locks and waist beads and rocking crystals all the time I like to kind of uh, blend in in that aspect but I don't like to blend in now when it comes to my spirituality when it comes to my magic and who I'm going to be around. This woman insults everything about me. And a lot of you are going through that too. People don't understand why you dress the way you dress, why you talk the way you talk, the things you eat, your choices. Some of you are choosing not to travel. Some of you are choosing not to get, you know, the V word. Some of you are choosing to take your children out of school and homeschool them. And these people don't get it because they're robots. They follow in society laws. They're following more of the land and man laws than they are spiritual law. Chosen ones, we operate with spiritual law more because it's embedded in us. We know these things because God has placed it in us. We know we don't even need the Bible. A lot of us don't even need the Bible because God, I believe if you really are religious, I feel like you, and that that's instilled in you. When you go to do something, God's going to tell you, eh, 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 you don't need the Bible to tell you that. <laughs> when you have a connection and alignment to the creator, you're going to know what to do. It's almost like a navigation system in you. There's times when I do things, I'm going, how the hell did I know to do that? Or how did I know to identify that? I didn't learn that in the Bible. I didn't watch that on YouTube. Because when you're connected and you're in alignment to your creator, you will be told what to do, where to go. It's scary. It's very scary. You have to tap in, tap into your God. But yes. Guys, if you have somebody in your life who insults you, everything about you, oh, why you got that on? Why you doing, why you dating him or her? And mm, I don't know. What you mean you're not going to get V'd? What, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Why would you do that? Why would you wear that? Those aren't your people. Those aren't your people. And I'm not saying that with love doesn't come correction and discipline, but damn, everything about you they don't like. Every time you go see them, you know you have to be on guard. You know you have to pretend to be something else that you're not. Why would you even want to even deal with people like that? So yeah, I did ghost her. She did, she did text me twice. She did call me. I didn't respond. And I'm choosing to do it that way. Because I think her being a psychologist, 
she would want to discuss why. Let's analyze this. What can I do to fix this? There's nothing you can do to fix this. You ain't my people. Okay. <laughs> every time you, every time you're around somebody and your spirit is uncomfortable, those ain't your people. You're going to hear that. <laughs> you're going to hear my voice in your head saying that over and over. Them ain't your people. Those ain't your people. <laughs> okay. Get away from these robots. Get away from them. They can get you hurt, killed. They can, they can stall your destiny effing with them. I'm telling you. So it's not just narcissists. This is just regular everyday people that you grew up with, that you work with. They're there. They exist. And I know a lot of times we have to speak to them because we work with them or, you know, we have to interact with them somehow. But to have close relationships with these people, no. If I feel like I can't be myself around you, you don't need to be around me. Whenever you can't be yourself around people, whenever you catch yourself putting on a mask, get away from them. Okay. So that is, that's my lesson for today, guys. You know, have an amazing Valentine weekend. I'm sorry that I talked so long, but you really needed this because a lot of you are still uh, pretending in order to get along with certain people and hold on to certain connections and relationships that are hindering you. You got to understand every time someone insults you, that lowers your vibration. Oh, you're not this. You're not that. Why you look like that? You leave them or you hang up that phone feeling less than what you really needed to be at that moment. Insults seep into your subconscious. You don't need that shit, okay? <clears throat> Stay with your peoples. <laughs> Have an amazing Valentine weekend, guys. Go out with your friends. Go to the spa. You know, so I can't afford anything. Okay, um, well, walk around Target. <laughs> Go buy yourself some chocolate, something. Do something nice for yourself. If you're in good weather, go to the beach, go to the park, walk with your dog or your cat or whatever you got. Do something nice for yourself that you normally don't do. And I'm telling you, the highest form of love is God's love and uh, self-love. I don't care what no one says, because if you don't have self-love, you're going to F up your life. I'm telling you, your man or woman, you can come home one day and they go in a closet empty. I'm letting you know that right now. The highest form of love I have ever experienced on this earth is self-love, uh, God's love, and believe it or not, unconditional love for my mom, okay? And I really, I feel like she still loves me eternally, Okay. And people, I don't understand. To me, romantic love is like one of the lowest forms of love on earth, but it's so needed and wanted to these people. And I never understood it and I don't get it. Okay. Yes, we all need people. We all want love, but I never understood the obsession of it. And that's why I think there's so much uh, talk about it and, and why people are so obsessed with it because it's actually one of the lowest forms of love that's just my opinion guys i'm not saying you know if y'all have a good man or woman i'm really really happy for you um but to me it's one of the most lowest forms you know um i personally have never felt that kind of love because people are selfish you know lovers can be very very selfish and when they're done with you they're done with you okay um but yeah that's my story, and I hope those of you who are trying to manifest love, I hope you get it, because I'm, I'm, I want love too, guys. You know, I do too. You know, there's people, there's, there are men who love me, but I don't feel the same for them. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. It's like you can't force connection, okay? It's either I'm not attracted to them, or I just don't feel the same for them. I love them as a friend, you know, and that's one thing. You cannot force romantic uh attraction you know what I'm saying and there's been people who I loved in the past and they didn't love me back and they went ahead and married whoever they wanted to marry so romantic love can be very tricky and love comes from 
all different forms. Sometimes your children love you more than a man or woman has ever loved you. <sighs> but yeah, let me go. I got to go take another damn PCR test every time. I got to go to the doctor. I got to take a PCR just to go to the doctor. It's so stupid. It's so dumb, guys. It's so stupid. It drives me crazy. It is 60 degrees in New York, so I'm so excited about that. <laughs> So outdoor dining for me will not be too bad this weekend. I think I'm going to probably do dinner tomorrow night or something like that. It is my friend's birthday. We usually go out for his birthday, but I ain't paying for nobody's birthday this year. Last year, I took all these people out for their birthday. I don't even dare. I don't even talk to them now. <laughs> I took him out for his birthday last year. I think I spent like $200 on his birthday this year. Sorry, boo. I said, oh, if you want to go out, you're going to pay for yourself. <laughs> I know that sounds messed up, but, you know, I said, I'll pay for myself, but I'm not treating anybody. Nope, nope, nope. This is my selfish year. I'm putting myself first. Got to put myself first. Anybody who's been on Instagram know those videos. Got to put myself first. Put yourself first this weekend, okay? And I'm sure I'll do a video um, probably by Monday or something like that. Okay, guys, I have to curl my hair. It looks a mess right now. Take care, guys, and get out the depression this weekend. It is just a stupid pagan holiday. All right, peace and blessings. Talk to you soon, guys.